you can see the most of the trees with the full of uh, uh, the, this uh, uh, bryophytes and other liver birds and all that kind of thing because it shows the with the high levels of humidity of the atmosphere water and this humidity and this for this this areas actually uh, support lot of uh, uh, endemic and uh, endangered as well as high diversity for example all these birds are endemic birds of west bengal except one all of them are available inside forest, inside silent valley my study on the birds of silent valley a national park i have studied birds of uh, deeper evergreen forest and with something disturbed outside the answer is the deeper you go the rare endemic and unique unique species are more when you come to disturbed area you will all other side inside the other birds like crow you cannot see inside the forest area many of the regular birds which is common sal with the human being cannot see inside but very rare very unique very endemic birds are more inside the national park because inside the ecosystem is regulated in some sort of a climate forest even when you go to the just look at the champion says uh, so regular forest types which are available many of this most of the different types of forest forest types which is explained by the champion and says is available in the larger silent valley national park protected area some of the examples which i will bring it to you one such for example for example the short, when you go to the uh, upper reaches of uh, uh, this uh, anginda and sispara area you will get this so called uh, uh, this uh, shola forest montane shola forest area in the uh, crevices there will be stunted montane evergreen forest with the extensions of grasslands all these grasslands also are unique and uh, very unique uh, uh, for that matter many herbs on these grass grasses are unique and many of them are endemic even the birds are many endemic birds endemism in this higher ups are very high during even the our uh, the last glaciation period these are the top uh, areas in the western ghat such areas are where probably we have not affected by the uh, uh, other they are still continued through because of the this even many cases you will get to the even some of the species are even gone down or relics have uh, these are available in this areas so this is very unique kind of an ecosystem and the kind of species the trees and all is more of a laurasia dominated uh, tree composition when you come this this and is and the beautiful beauty is that most of this shola there are some uh, Bring it to us and ask. District of Kerala is not the. Uh, this is even now from the catchment area. This is the only forest which still survive, and because the whatever matter you get it during the uh, uh, summer or any other time, it is primarily is the water coming from this area. And similarly, if you just come for a little further down, about something thousand five hundred, four hundred meters, and all, you get very moist. very evergreen evergreen kind of forest area tall about 1000 to 1500 1800 meters altitude you get tall trees this beauty of the things if you walk through inside the forest you you won't see much uh, underground vegetation because the light penetration inside is very less you will it look like all evergreen forest tall trees about something like a 40 meters and it is wonderful uh, to walk through easily but it's very a uh, different kind of an experience to walk further down if you reach to 600 meters or further down that even particularly the many of the buffer zone area you get moist deciduous forest and this may something semi evergreen forest kind of thing so this is the kind of uh, altitude in a gradient in which uh, 
uh, this whole the landscape or the, of the Silent Valley is situated. Now, coming to very specific, in the higher ups of the 4,500, 4,800 meters high, if you just go to the evergreen forest, as I told you, the initial small first order uh, rivulets which comes from the grassland, the chola, and even the some forest area, which will come and can join together, make the forest streams. That is, every throughout the forest Silent Valley National Park, you can see n number of here. While you are walking through, very uh, five ten minutes you may, you may have to cross a one small stream which is alive perennially throughout the year all the time there will be water for that and these waters has and they are all uh, uh, come through uh, slowly different different uh, cascading through the different streams and finally reaches some somewhat lower levels and reaches into some sort of a wonderful sometime even after reaching uh, siren three or even further down if you just saw something, we see this, for example, this photograph, where you can see the pebbles below, and you, you can't even imagine how much water down depth it is. Something even at the age of six feet, seven feet, ten feet, you can see the water, the pebbles down has just crystal clear. This water is something extraordinary. The people who are experienced, like me and many other people who are experienced inside part of Silent Valley, with I can only appreciate the kind of taste, the kind of total the feel of the water is totally different. So this point, at this point, I would like to tell a small story to me because I, uh, as a child, when I used to read my the books when I was school days, I have the first time I heard about the river Kundi. This the river we start from Silent Valley. Is when when I was a child, I used to read books those days. There, that one of the book which uh, uh, I have read was uh, written by a person called Kotaratil Sanguni in Malayalam, and this speaks about the different kind of legends and myths of the different different location and the people of the legendary characteristics and all. One of the story was about one Vaidya in uh, Kerala. And his the story is about his crazy way of uh, prescribing medicine to people. The story was about that. And in that, he said, one, one story says that one fellow has gone, he has some completely very chronic uh, skin diseases throughout the body. He is, goes all around the country and asking for so many vaidyas, nobody treat and they, nobody could treat him. Finally, he reaches to this particular vaidya and he uh, examines him and goes a prescription, go and take bath in the river Kundi for one month. That was a prescription. And the story says he went and took the bath and uh, the, his so, whole skin, uh, the whole very perennial long, uh, that old, very old, uh, very old, uh, that kind of a skin disease of cured. This was the first time I heard about, I read about the river. But when I visited and lived there for about four years, each time when I was drinking and taking bath and walking and running through this river, I felt this is much more than that. This is actually the, the rivulets, which is the water seeping through that different, different extraordinary vegetation of this landscape. Actually, has much, much more different kind of medicinal plant property, medicinal property, and definitely it nurtured the people of this land. And that is the beauty of this national park. And we didn't even know when you kill a river like this, we really didn't know what exactly we are killing it, what tradition we are taking it. Actually, this is we are talking about the heritage of this conference. This is the greatest one of the natural heritage, natural heritage of the country. And it, along with its cultural and medicinal and so many ways, the river Kundi, which comes to the Sairendri, there is a uh, and finally goes down further and joined with the far venue. This is, this is one of our photographs of near the uh, the dam site, which is some proposed dam site, which is now nowadays people who goes to uh, Silent Valley can go to up to uh, that. Uh, Generally, there is a at present there is a big tower is made, and uh, watch tower from me, the whole valley view you will get it. From there, you two kilometer people can walk up to this particular point. This is called uh, uh, the dam site where the uh, and you can see the the flow of the river there and uh, come uh, come up. That is the arrangement. The present day the tourist people to some. Well, nowadays, Silent Valley, whoever goes to tourism from the Mukali, the base station, they accept the people, and then the forest department vehicle they will take to the 22 kilometers to reach the watchtower and, and climb up the. Yeah, yeah. 
this land. For example, it's very high rich. That, but still, I would say the more you research, the more you get. They are likely to get it because still, all the researchers have not reached every corner of the uh, really rich uh, rain, rain, for rainforest. So far, in as per the records, we have 41 mammals inside the, this uh, forest area. 211 bird species are identified. 49 drop tails are identified. 49, 47 amphibians. 12 species, species the hill stream fishes and 164 species of butterflies and 400 species of moths. Definitely more will be there. More than 1,000 species of flowering plants, 107 orchids, including that uh, Ipsia malabarica as a ground orchid, 100 species of fern, 200 species of liverworts, 75 species of lichens, and 200 species of algae. There are, even now, many other groups still the potential to get this area gives possibility of uh, uh, what I should say uh, uh, high diversity. The more and more you go and study, the more and more keep coming. That is the condition. And this land, the core area, there is not much people living. Surrounded forest area. This area, uh, there are so many different tribal groups. They are living. Uh, they are primarily the whole landscape is very uh, dominated by Irula tribal, even the Tamil Nadu plains as well as the southern everywhere, Irula tribes are there, but in they have there the Kurumba tribes are there, Murugas are there, even the Katanaikas from the northern, uh, north, uh, eastern side, there are some there also there. So all these four uh, were tribal groups, they have some hamlets surrounding the, the, the mostly in the close to the buffer zone of the national parks. So uh, Coming to the conservation importance of this land. Uh, one thing which is when uh, the first biosphere reserve of the country, Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve declared, Silent Valley is identified as the core area, one of the core area of the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. Uh, and surrounding forest also. So the whole landscape has to be conserved along with the uh, then only the actual proper. So, as uh, for the conservation importance in the the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve landscape, this has become one of the very important, very interesting core area. Similarly, uh, the, as I already told you, it's a repository of medicinal plants and it, and also ethnobotanical importance. We just go and talk to those tribal different species, the people, uh, the tribal groups. They have their own uh, tremendous knowledge connected with uh, uh, botanic, uh, the plants and the healing property of the plants. I, uh, how much it is scientific, we don't know. Where hundreds of people from different parts of the country used to come to, to meet one of the tribal Valiyama in that same area. They claim to have, uh, he has, she has herbal remedies for even some of the cancer. And even well-known people used to come there and uh, treat there. Some people, I myself have, uh, some people have talked to me because they said they have got cured, but I don't know scientifically it's right or not, but it is there at least some, uh, there are different, different possibilities are there which still we have not uh, understood or even attempted to decipher out. Similarly, uh, as I told you, wide range of altitudinal zonation, unique biodiversity, presence of uh, virgin mountain, evergreen forest in the Shola forest, in the upper layer. These are all uniqueness of this land. Supporting uh, the lion tailed macaque is another one. Very unique, very good populations of uh, lion tailed macaque and uh, bird and uh, reptilian diversity. And, uh, uh, and even it offers being a very reasonably well untouched, very well intact plain forest. It gives an opportunity for us ecologists to study deeper questions of ecology. Ecology, as well as since a lot of three, four, uh, uh, this uh, uh, people are there. People, uh, uh, indigenous or tribal people are there. There is a lot of scope for human ecological studies as well. And of course, because of various this reason, ecotourism potential. But though 
government of uh, kerala the forest department has restricted the uh, very limited people only allowed there's a capping is there how many people can a day send it to inside but even then this is an area with to understand the real wilderness of the forest and particular rainforest in the country this is the right place to come properly there is a great potential for ecotourism there is an ecotourism already in place there is a something called eco development committees involving local people tribals and all and through this uh, eco tourism and eco development committees local people local tribals are getting benefited from the process of conservation of this in the national park similarly uh, uh, there is a, a great potential for uh, imparting nature awareness and education to make people aware about nature to i myself is a product of that nature when i went there as a first bsc student in 1985 the forest officers over there the teachers who took me over there instilled the i would say the first part of the greenery in my heart which prompted me to go in the field of wildlife and study and work on across the country or all this area and my i would say uh, it is this valley who made me what i am and that silence whatever this unusual this is uniqueness that is what more important the awareness potential is very much high uh, and and the whole now the credit i would like to give it to the super kerala forest department their meticulous planning it is commitment and they have a lot of activities going on for the forest protection habitat conservation for their forest level for department level research activities and uh, well, for regular flora and fauna bird surveys and all regular nature education free camps for the children and they conduct many program like people oriented program like film festival ecological activities and eco tourism programs and all that thing and more importantly different parts of the uh, buffer zone there are regular uh, camps protection camps for which is actually uh, 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 giving Uh, regular people we we looking there for to stop again because the, among the threats the forest fire is one of the because being in a evergreen forest evergreen forest would be the specialty that the most of the trees have high levels of uh, um, oil content by chance if it get into a crown fire it's very difficult to stop it so even if it is not completely possible to stop or incidents of fire but the moment the incidents of fire happen immediately this protective staff will rush to that point try to control then and there with this this commitment now these people could almost maintain very strict vigilance and i could say the many many large the, the secondary area where earlier people with this attempt i mean had fire now has come as an extraordinary forest area it's the last 30 40 years is something uh, really worth getting uh, appreciated kerala forest department deserve that appreciation it is done extraordinary well yeah that is it's a very heartening for many of the people who know the uh, story of this land for the last so many 30 40 years similarly but there are incidences on the buffer area something like some location people are known for the cannabis cultivation then some sort of an issue the recent issues like some of the maoist movement issues and all kind of thing some areas there some encroachment issues are there which are all happening in the peripheral buffer zone area not in the core area but even then the forest department is continuously fighting for it and also the issue of the human animal conflict that is across the country they all are there in the fringe area but department definitely deserve a thumbs up for their committed work for this i just give you some example for this is the two maps the first one i am just showing you so there are areas where this tribal hamlets again tribal hamlets are not in the core area actually this is something which is but mostly the outside area but here these are the area where a lot of uh, uh, this camp sheds are surrounding the whole forest there are regular watcher camp shed which the per permanent people are being placed and they particularly in the summer area well the fire watching team more number of people are placed to control the fire forest fire and that gives a good result they have two rivers this is a kundi and this is a major ridge i told you this this then and this is this particular thing a bhavani river which coming the on the eastern side of the same buffer zone all that uh, with that uh, i i would like to uh, uh, thank you for 
I'm giving you this opportunity, but this, this is the entrance of the actual National Park core area when you reach. And then uh, this particular forest area is one of its kind because of its uh, uh, uniqueness. I mean, mainly because, not only because of biodiversity, not only because of the uh, evergreenness or rain, uh, uh, and not only because of the whole history of the people's moment, even otherwise also. Sometimes deeper inside the forest, when you sit alone, when you see things, the kind of silence is something different. Not only here, I think ever, most of the typical real evergreen forest. Our in tradition, our people uh, in the olden days, we know the stories of people going to the forest for silence. So, but uh, this name, named after silence and Silent Valley, I'm sure it has a different levels of silence. Even uh, I'm a person who study bird acoustics or bioacoustics. I try to record the sounds of the different kinds of forest and uh, different um, uh, bird songs and all. Some, one thing which I have seen, silence of every location is not the same. Silence of a uh, urban area has a, even though many of the background so-called silence will have a sound. And the background sound is different in different locations. I have seen the background sound of Anakati region in my, my forest. Area. This is also a forest of a more of an open grassland, something like about uh, 25, around 20, between 20, 20, 20, around 20 to 25 uh, uh, decibels. But uh, when the background silence of even some of the uh, soundproof rooms is because of the equipments far away kept it and all, something like about 18, 19 uh, decibels is coming. But I have seen in deep evergreen forests where when you record the, the sound that background sound is something like a, even below around close to 10 kind of thing. so the silence of the different forest different army itself is different so always the forest have a much more deeper silence which we can transform us which we can give us which we can enrich us so silent valley is one of the best place to go experience an extraordinary expression of life on earth and this is a wonderful area to transform you and to teach you and it's a wonderful area uh, for all of all of you to come and visit thank you thank you very much and if any have anybody has any special uh, question i can uh, answer that thank you very much sir thank you dr Pramod. it's a wonderful talk <laughs> you have taken us to an area where the rainfall is between four thousand to six thousand and uh, we are in a place, it is a 400 mm rainfall if we get, we are so happy. <laughs> and uh, um, I mentioned that there are more than 1,000 plus trees uh, in in the area, Silent Valley area. That is roughly around 90 square kilometer core area and 148 square kilometer buffer area. And the whole Gujarat plants, total plants is around 1,000 plus only. <laughs> but uh, looking at the birds, yeah. I feel that the birds number is little less when compared to other areas. It is 211 species. Then endemic. I will tell you, can I answer that, sir? Yeah, please. Yes, please. The thing is, uh, see, the unique, uh, the, uh, uh, when you are number wise, even my study in my own PhD work uh, on in Silent Valley, inside Silent Valley, what you get is something like 200. When you just come out of then you have different kind of uh, composition like wetlands and uh, dry deciduous and all mixed in a very local, localized and even also when the outside birds are, all movement birds are coming it's when it is not a very controlled ecosystem you, there are chance of any bird come and go or not silent was a very unique evergreen forest their hospitality of just to get anybody and everybody to pass her by and all is not there this is a very system anybody cannot go and live there and the birds which go there and live there are living there for thousands and thousands of years. They are endemic to that area. So whatever birds there is, they will not get anywhere else. Okay, so that is their unique area. So that is not a place to rich part of, it's a rich only, but the rich also uniqueness is there. The yeah. the forest, the kind of no other place can be placed. Okay. Uh, Dr. Vijay, Vijay Kumar, Dr. Yes. Vijay Kumar, excuse yes. me. Uh, I am a retired professor at Tena uh, Very good afternoon, sir. <laughs> my sir 
actually i am very very grateful today whenever you talk about silent valley people immediately say sikada see whether they never bother about lti about the thing uh, sikada so there is no sikada silent valley you now what <laughs> i want to have clarify to the presenters whether you have recorded any the calls of this uh, sikadas uh, when they emerge out and then during that one number one and yes. also you said british are 70 years see there are certain species where they have the annual cycles also so uh, in that case we must be very casual and uh, what i did at this juncture i think people like you must uh, create an awareness uh, throughout the world that it is not silent because the cicadas are available uh, even 90% i know very well people they don't aware of the existence of the cicada i think you do accept that i have i just said sir i have said in the beginning i was i, I have explained yeah, you have said it there everywhere everywhere probably what could be many reason could have been but definitely sikala is there in almost everywhere <laughs> very good number uh, yes but i want to have you recorded the calls of the sikada you have recording of the calls of the sikada have, those days i was though when i was moving around i had there was not much into recording sir but now i will do that at present hey. no but yeah yeah and that yeah, very, that will be good uh, very informative i think we we had very good lecture Uh, one thing is i will add we have flora palgate uh, during 1983 it was done uh, yeah. i think before declaration uh, dr vajlu did then we have yeah. flora silent valley by professor manilal yes he gave us a copy in 1919 when i visited calicut i visited up to mukali yes. because it was late the people that did allow to go uh, so first my question is This eight thousand feet is the maximum height of the peak. Eight thousand feet. Uh, no, maximum is third. I mean, it is not feet. I just told it is in meters. I told two thousand three hundred sixty some okay. something like that. It's a Panginda Sispara peak actually. Less than Doda Beta. Doda Beta is maximum. Yeah, definitely, definitely less than Doda Beta. Definitely. So another than. question. My one question is when the when the forest is destroyed for dam. that as we didn't ever cut forest were cut and they were burnt also uh, for for the case of the dam what is the restoration measure is it, it was done or no just sir that area particular pullipara just opposite to the, the dam site which was actually in 1990s uh, early 1980s and all it was completely grassland now the whole area is a full of forest area wonderful forest area come back Thanks for the for assortment, sir. Yeah, I, I, I can, we I have in this group uh, Dr. Kunikarnan, who is a yeah. botanist and a director of IFGTB, who also is my senior, who worked there for law so many years. He will he he will tell that more. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, yeah. Um, uh, with the permission of the chair, uh, yeah, I wanted to propose. Yeah, please. Yeah, even uh, before I think Pramod goes there, I was there in the Silent Valley in the, during eighty eight, eighty nine. uh it was a first assignment given to me immediately after my msc by the wildlife warden and then i got chance to work in that area and still uh, whenever i get a chance to move there that is uh, never i leave that uh, chance a anyway i try to move into that because that is i mentioned that you cannot explain the uh, explain the uniqueness of the silent valley only you have to feel it really it has to be feel Right, right. So I I right. have two projects now also uh, continuing and that documenting the plant diversity of uh, buffer zone of Silent Valley and also seed seed bank of uh, Silent Valley. Two students are working in that and uh, really really uh, very great uh, work uh, they presented by Dr. Pramod and uh, you as you asked the actually. i have studied the change in the uh, re restoration aspect uh, so many uh, tree species that pioneer species started coming in the uh, in this grasslands and uh, under the uh, pioneer species so many evergreen species also not now started coming up in the grassland and it is uh, very nice uh, the thing actually I happening now naturally it is happening so because of the protection provided by the forest department thank you thank you yeah. uh, I, i am now leaving the with the all your permission to another class uh, by the university
thank you very much for giving the chance to come in and uh, thank uh, pramod also for giving a very nice lecture so thank you very much thank you sir thank you good morning sir yeah with the permission of the chair i would like to ask a question huh? please sir. Yes, share some not question uh, a wonderful talk by pramod and, I don't know. I have met you or not. I am Ravi Shankar from actually Botanical Survey of India, Southern Territory. Silent Valley is, you know, connected with my research uh, work in the sense when I joined the Southern Territory as JRF, Silent Valley uh, thing was going on. And whenever we Botanical Survey of India jeeps go there, they considered it as a government of India vehicle and they used to pelt stones, Hello. even though we were going only for survey. And we had two projects, Idiki Silent Valley project and, you know, POSEF, Dr. Antari is here, POSEF uh, project. And uh, when I got the SRF, the Biosphere program was going on. <laughs> so it's really interesting and I sincerely thank you for a wonderful talk and you have taken us. Uh, the last 30 years of you know uh, our memories whenever we sit down dr nc nair used to you know nc nair yeah, he yeah, starts yeah. with uh, sahayadri hills wow. uh, joint director uh, botanical survey of india retired yeah. uh, see it's, uh, it's really a comprehensive work because SECON being a very specialized institution you are able to do that and this needs to be networked with the kind of other institutions like bsi and zsi and we go into graduation, uh, graduate into policy making and policy support, which I think we need to do. Even Ujay Kumar is there from you know, Gujarat and uh, there are many stalwarts. And uh, we have this SACON, ZSI, BSI and all the other research institutions are umbrella organizations, which are you know, recognized by the Biodiversity Act also as the institutions to support implementation of the act. And uh, you see, unfortunately, what is happening in our country is that uh, most of the times it is a knee-jerk reaction. So what happens, you know, ethnobotany, you said, and you spoke about the, you know, value of uh, uh, the traditional knowledge. No, and yeah, yeah. also there is a, a lady, and you said the same lady, I think. We had a very big uh, project for nearly 10 years. Pushpangadan was heading that All India Coordinated Research Project on Ethnobiology. Yeah, after that, you know, it went into cold storage, except Jeevani. Even when, you know, before uh, Convention on Biodiversity and ABS, we came up with Jeevani and, you know, benefit sharing mechanism with, you know, Kani tribe and the International Institute of Ayurveda and, you know, TBGRI and Government of India. So these things are happening. But after that, that report has gone into cold storage. So that is one unfortunate thing. And also, you know, the participatory approaches you said about e eco development committees and, uh, you know, forest conservation committees. The JFA movement, uh, it was actually supported with, uh, you know, external uh, support. So once the external support is withdrawn, unfortunately, uh, they, you know, they start, so this should not happen because, you know, we have to link it with, you know, rural development. That is one thing, you know, there are, in our country, we are having two types of ministries or departments. One is earning ministry and one is spending ministry. <laughs> like, you know, our uh, institutions, research institutions are spending department. But, you know, where we are spending, we are working at natural resources management. Without ecology, there is no economics. So these things needs to be understood and we have to, you know, think and then uh, we should have more think tanks in institutions like SACON and BNHS and BSI, so that, you know, there is a uh, very good linkages so that we develop resources and at the same time conserve resources. Ah, Otherwise, yeah, it yeah. is very difficult to implement okay. acts like Biodiversity Act or, and also there should be convergence of acts, Biodiversity Act, Tribal Act, you know, Environment Act. So there is a need for networking of institutions so that we have a collective approach to, you know, reach our collective goal. Thank you for a wonderful talk. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Your point has been well, well taken. Thank you. So sir. now I am uh, handing it over to the vice chair, uh, Dr. Kumaraguru Arbugam. Uh, uh, Professor Mishra, Professor Mishra, 
Yes, sir. Professor, Professor, Professor Mishra, can I take on? Yes, uh, so Just wait, sir. Just wait. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, Kum Kumara Guru, uh, not joined, sir. Okay. Dr. V Vijay Kumar, sir, please conclude. Okay, okay sir. Dr. Pramod, uh, who has uh, very much experience in uh, Silent Valley and Western Guards, he has uh, delivered a wonderful talk and he has, in fact, taken us to the Silent Valley area from the last maybe two, three decades, three, four decades even. So it is in a beautiful area and uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Ahmad sir has told that once you visit there, then only you feel the area because it is not just uh, seeing or uh, hearing the things. The area itself has its own feelings, but he has made us to feel that area's uh, biodiversity and its importance and everything through his wonderful talk. Congratulate you, Dr. Pramod. Thank you for a wonderful talk. Thank you. Enriching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. P. Pramod, sir, uh, Dr. You, sir. Vijay Kumar, sir, uh, uh, for uh, this session uh, and uh, some uh, our uh, guest uh, uh, participant, Dr. Ravi Shankar Thupali, sir, Dr. Anish, sir, Dr. Puni Kanan, sir, and uh, uh, who uh, participated uh, in this uh, session. And uh, nice talk, uh, Dr. P. Pramod, sir, uh, on Silent Valley. And thank you for uh, uh, given time uh, in this way, uh, for in this webinar, sir. Thank you, all of you, sir. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Now I am proceed the next session, second session. Here, person three, P. M. Keswa, sir, superintendent, archaeologist, Bangalore, Karnataka. Co chair person Sri Babji Rao. Deputy Superintendent in Archaeology, Hyderabad, and our eminent speaker, Dr. N. S. Ramchandra Murthy, formerly Deputy Director, Archaeology and Museum, Government of Andhra Pradesh. So, uh, Senior uh, uh, Archaeologist, uh, Dr. Uh, N. S. Ram, uh, Ramchandra Murthy, sir. So, now I am requesting to VTM Keswa, sir, please chair the session. And introducing our senior archaeologist, Dr. N. S. Ram Chandra Murthy. Dr. P. M. Kosa. Shall I take on, sir? Yes, sir. Shall I, shall I, shall I begin? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. This uh, was and... sir. sir. Please, sir, wait. Sir, just wait, sir. Let, uh, yes. let you be introduced by... Uh, ah, yes, yes. Question first. Mm. Okay, okay. Welcome, sir. Uh, sir, uh, where is... Yeah. I'm not able to see... I'm not able to see Keshava. Keshava, yeah, just like saw, I saw he, he was he, there for a couple of months, minutes back. I and see. now he went out. Uh, meanwhile, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Skant Kumar Mishraji, for your incredible uh, journey, saga of journey you made for the, all the participants for the, all these four, four days, showing the complex uh, biodiversity of India and its cultural identity in different forms. Thank you very much. It's a great, indeed, a great opportunity for all the participants and speakers and the uh, same persons to take part in this. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 Mr. Keshwa, sir, please. Keshwa, sir, is here. Please unmute yourself, sir. Keshwa, sir, please unmute yourself. You are muted. Yes. Please unmute. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, now, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, please introduce. Babaji Raoji, Namaskar. Namaskar, how are you? Bye. Bye. Happy New Year. My Namaskar to all of them. Anis Ahmad Ansari ji, how are you? Well, uh, after uh, listening to uh, a small discourse, uh, part of the discourse on Silent Valley, actually I went back to 1973 when I was a botany zoology student. And uh, I studied uh, chemistry as minor subject, botany zoology as my major subjects. Uh, and I uh, competed 
for BSc, MSc, Botany and Zoology. And unfortunately, it was said that at that year of my admission for the MSc, the total mass card, the total percentage stood at 62 for Zoology and uh, 64 for Botany. And uh, I was 59 as usual. I could get an entry being in the general category and being from being becoming an officer in the IFS department or botanist, I became an archaeologist. No hard feelings. I walked through the Silent Valley for my archaeological exploration. And uh, incidentally, I happened to one of my colleagues, senior colleagues, somebody is playing music. Somebody is playing music. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, incidentally, I happened to be introduced by one of my colleagues, senior colleagues, uh, late Das, Jitendra Das, to Andhra Pradesh. And at Andhra Pradesh, I was in charge of the museums of Andhra Pradesh, Nagarjuna Kunda, Amaravati, Kondapur, and Chandragiri. And uh, at Amara, at uh, Nagarjuna Kunda, one Aris Kulkarni, my senior colleague, was there. However, because he was uh, in a rush to marry of his daughter, he used to frequently hand over the charge of Nagarjuna Kunda to me. So within a span of one and a half years, I could develop Andhra Pradesh uh, Museum and be friends. Now here, I am in front of Ramchandra Murthy, sir, one of the greatest yeah. joints of Andhra archaeology. It is introducing him. He is like uh, lighting a lamp or holding no. a <laughs> No, no, no. No, no. Uh, uh, kindly uh, don't uh, say that. Kindly don't say that. I am privileged to yeah, I, I, see the I, I, great I feel, I, I feel honored. I feel honored. I have, I have heard about him. I had read about him. And unfortunately, during my 99, 1999 to 2001 stay at Andhra Pradesh, I couldn't see him due to my preoccupation. However, my salutations at the feet of Ramachandra Murti Garu. No, no. And, thank, uh, you. thank you very much, sir. It's very kind of you. Introducing uh, him, perhaps Babji Rao hailing from that area will do the justice than me. However, <laughs> he has his PhD from Dharwad University in 1981. He was, he was born in 11 years before me, sir. Why you make me to introduce him? He was already introduced. So he was 1843 born. And uh, he has served as registering officer for the Department of Archaeology and Museums, Government of Andhra Pradesh, at Tirupati, Karimnagar, Hyderabad, Vaisaj, and he has served as assistant director. See, an archaeologist, usually he will have his hands in all the pie that he prepares, whether it be epigraphy or its art, it is architecture, it is tempology, it is numismatics, what not. He is a master of all, jack of none, like that. He handles every subject because he is forced to handle. He has to know about these subjects before venturing into writing a scholarly article. And uh, he great many salutations of mine to Ramachandra Murthy Garo because he has enriched Thank you very much, sir. archaeology. Thank you very much, knowledge sir. of archaeology of Andhra Pradesh. A drawing of Andhra Pradesh archaeology. If I say it is not an exaggeration, no, no. it's very kind it of is, you. Very kind it, of it you. It is. It is the happiest occasion to note. Recently, I came to know, or just now I saw, he has been instrumental in uh, 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 writing about the origin and development of Telugu script. That is the greatest contribution of one can do for his state. We couldn't do it for our Karnataka. He has done it for Andhra Pradesh. Salutations to that once again. And he is recently associated of, for finalizing the South Indian inscriptions. And he is uh, as a guiding the epigraphy branch of Archaeological Survey of India. Even now, he is active like a bee. I expect 
more knowledgeable data on Andhra Pradesh in, uh, in particular and of our country in general. And kudos to Ramachandra Murthy Garu. Nice to have seen him in through this media in uh, <coughs> through the, uh, media in the form of a photograph. And my his presentation itself will speak. Once again, fortifications are many types. Girijurga, Jaladurga, Vanadurga, and uh, the uh, open land. And he is uh, studied the fortification of Andhra Pradesh in greater detail. PhD, PhD, and, PhD, PhD, PhD. and he has a PhD over it. And naturally, he has more to say than I. Poor Ramachandra Murthy Gaurav, sir. Please, I. Uh, with pride and uh, yeah. great, great devotee, devotedness, I welcome you to share this uh, August session and enlighten us about the faults of Andhra Pradesh. May, 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 may God give you such more, many more opportunities Century. to Century. Thank, Century. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you so much. You, Thank you so much. You, Yes, sir, can I can I take over? Yes, am sir. I you audible? Start. You start. Am I audible? Yes, am I you, audible? Are, you are audible, yes. visible, everything is uh, okay. Yes, yes sir. And, Go on, sir. Uh, at the outset, before I begin my talk, let me kindly express my <coughs> gratitude to the distinguished scholar Professor Keshava for kindly speaking uh, <laughs> speaking about me in such inaudible words, which I believe I do not deserve. But I sh at the same time, I should also say that all this is because of my teachers, the late Sri Malampal Sovasekar Zarma, legendary figure in epigraphy in Telugu in Andhra, and uh, Dr. Parabrahma Shastri, <clears throat> who has made me what I am today in learning epigraphical studies and all that. And I was also a student of, uh, for my research, Professor P. B. Desai and uh, Dr. S. H. Rethi, when I was working on, for my thesis on forts of operation in Karnataka University. And I happy, as he has already introduced me, uh, I happened to work in the Department of Archaeology and Museums in the government of Andhra Pradesh uh, in di different capacities. That is, epigraphical assistant, registering officer, assistant at epigraphy, assistant at publications, and also finally, I retired as deputy director of epigraphy. Uh, and all right, but uh, uh, let us leave it, leave it apart. And uh, I also convey my thanks to Dr. Bob Giro, who has been my colleague, uh, scholarly colleague, uh, when I was working in the department, and we used to see it often, and discuss about so many aspects of our studies. And now, uh, and I, I, I seek your permission to kindly uh, read me and uh, read my talk uh, because I'm afraid uh, being an old man of 80 years, I will not be able to remember or I'm likely to miss some of the points which I wanted to emphasize upon. Kindly, would it, uh, may I proceed, sir? Please, sir. Please, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our respected chairperson, Professor Mishra, distinguished scholars. At the outset, I express my grateful thanks to Professor Mishra for kindly inviting me to this August conference and giving me a pleasant opportunity to speak on <coughs> defense, Jaina and Hindu temple architecture of Telugu people in a general and broader perspective. <coughs> Coming to the subject proper, it may be pointed out that the two Telugu states that is present on the Pradesh and Telangana put together are endowed with most suitable and geographical features required for human habitation since remote past, that is prehistoric times. This includes vast natural resources like a long coastline of over 900 kilometers, that is Bay of Bengal running from north to south, presence of perennial and semi perennial rivers like Godavari and Krishna, Tumabhadra and Penna innumerable rivulets, a dense forest system, and finally high mountain ridges like the Eastern Ghats, which occupy the whole length and breadth of the Telugu country. Among them are the local hill ranges like the, Nalamal <coughs> like the Nalamalais, Erumalais, Palakondalu, and Velikondalu, 
and the elevated Deccan Plateau. These features exercised a profound influence on human life and culture, as observed by Panikka, who says the geographical features such as mountain systems, rivers, climate, and geology constitute the permanent basis of every nation's history and are the determining factors of historical growth and evolution of people. The two Telugu states, that is Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, inherited rich cultural wealth in the form of prehistoric settlements, early historic sites ranging in date from 4th, 3rd century BC to 3rd, 4th century AD, and religious edifices of the early historic, early medieval, medieval, late medieval, and modern periods. The advent of writing turned human civilization or the prehistoric times into historic, discarding prehistoric traits. Living prehistoric culture will turn our attention to an examination of the invaluable archaeological wealth between to us, that is, excellent architectural and artistic remains, inscriptions, coins, and a wide array of portraits, beads, iron implements, and structural vestiges, which reflect the glory and splendor of our civilization and culture through different periods. The architectural features and artistic glory are indeed unique and poor excellence. For the sake of convenience, let me classify our study into different periods. That is early historic, 500 BC to 624 AD, early medieval, 624 AD to 1000 AD, medieval, 1000 to 1324, late medieval, 1324 to 1724, and then modern. During these periods, flourished secular structures, dwellings and forts and fortifications, religious faiths like Buddhism, Jainism, Brahmin and Hinduism and Islam, which gave scope for building huge secular, religious, and memorial monuments. Defense of the, am I audible, sir? Yeah, you are audible, sir. You are absolutely audible. Uh, yes. And am I also clear? Absolutely. Uh, early historic. To begin with, the two states contain a large number of historic sites, remains, and monuments like Dharanikota, Kota Lingala, Satani Kota, Dulikata, Virapuram, Nagarjuna Kunda, Kondapur, Pedabankur, Polakonda, Chatur, and Amravati. These are mostly urban centers characterized by forts and fortifications, palace complexes, mints, and dwelling structures ranging in plan from circular to square and rectangular. Most of them are situated on river banks, that is, Krishna, Godavari, and other small rivulets. Excavations revealed well laid out dwellings, systematic water supply system, sanitary structures, besides public utility buildings like the amphitheater at Nagarjuna public baths and guards with a flight of steps for ascent from the rivers. There were also storage structures, cisterns, and drains. The building material included grass, mud, lime, rubble, and brick. Among them, Dharanikota, situated on the south bank of the river Krishna in Guntur district, Andhra Pradesh, is the earliest site with its beginnings going back to as early as 6th century BC in view of the profuse occurrence of NBP ware in association with silver, mosque, silver punch bulk points. Described in early inscriptions as Dhanakada, Dhamnakada, Dhanyakataka, and finally as Dhanyakota, it was first noticed by Colonel McKinji, who called it as Dhanakota, which, however, was in ruins. The next important evidence that came to light was the pillar edict of Soka, label inscriptions in Mauryan characters, and a prize of granite railing with typical Mauryan polish. Traces of habitation were noticed in the form of residential structures associated with black and red ware, iron implements, and post holes. Excavations revealed seven structural phases ranging from 3rd century BC to 3rd century AD, that is Yakshaku. In the final phase was found an embankment converted into a defensive wall. This makes it clear that the defenses at Darinkota belong to 4th, 3rd century BC and a younger contemporary of northern and forts like Kosambi, Ujjain, Ahichatra, and Varanasi. The next site of this period, which was excavated by me, and <coughs> demands notice is Kota Lingala in Karnal district Telangana and the bank of river Godavari. Situated on the south bank of the river Godavari, 
and flanked by the river at Pedagogo on the east, this region has hoary antiquity. The region around it was mentioned in the Buddhist text Anguttara Nikaya as Asma, Asmaka as one among the 16 Janapadas, shortest of Janapadas of the Buddhist literature, republics, and stood contiguous to Mulaka, that is present Maharashtra, higher up the river Godavari, with Python, that is Pratishtana, as the capital. Excavations revealed two occupation phases, phase one and phase two. In phase one were discovered silver Panchamad coins of Mauryan fabric and hence assignable to Maurya or post Maurya teams, times, that is fourth and third century BC. This is followed by a large number of uninscribed coins bearing elephant or horse on the obverse with the river when the, while the river is either blank or bears an orchard hill with a central dot curved or wavy line. The importance of this site lies in the fact that here came to light copper coins and trees at all times, kind of very reminds that bearing and <coughs> bearing legends in Mauryan characters that is second century BC, reading Rano Gobada, Rano Narana, Rano Sirikamvaya, and Rano Samagopa, followed by early Satavana coins of Siri Satavana, Siri Satakarni, and Siri Jimuka Satavana in phases one and two. In this context, let me tell you that the pre Satavana coins, which come from Kotlingala, is the earliest inscribed coinage in the whole of India also. We do not have inscribed coinage uh, <coughs> at, such an early, at, uh, such, at such an early period as the earliest. 3rd or 2nd century BC. And now to proceed. And followed by early Satavana kings, namely uh, Siri Satavahana, Siri Satakarni, and Siri Chimuka Satavahana in phases 1 and 2. On the basis of the occurrence of non Satavana coins discovered on surface and in stratigraphical context, Kotalingala was first occupied by the local chieftains, namely Gobada. Narana, Sirikambaya, and Siri Samagopa, followed by the early Satavanas, that is Siri Satavahana, Siri Satakani, and Siri Chimka Satavana. The ceramic waves of phase one, phase one are black and red, red slip, black polished, tan, and dull red ware. To this phase also belong other antiquities like beads made of steatite, terracotta, cornelian, quartz, ivory, crystal, and banded gauge. Thus, chronologically, the site falls within 4th, 3rd century BC to 1st century AD. According to Krishna Shastri, the region of Kotalingala formed the political nucleus of Deccan, situated as it does in the mid Godavari Valley, which increased the population and traversed the ancient trade routes between Magadha or Deccan via Vidarbha and Kosla. Like Dharanikota, here also came to light a defensive system in the form of a mud rampart run into a length of 1055 meters east-west and 333 meters wide north-south. It rises to a height of over, over 9 meters with a basal width of 70 meters. Here also came, here also, there are also square and rectangular dwellings on plan, built of large rubble stones, measuring 4.40 meters long east-west and 5.60 meters wide north-south. Phase 2 shows an increase in structural activity. In this phase was built the long brick fortification wall over the mud rampart, running to a length of 19 meters east-west and rising to a height of 1.10 meters, comprising 11 courses of bricks arranged in offset fashion. The bricks are large in size, measuring 16 to 30 into 5 centimeters. Underneath the lowermost courts in layer 3 was rubble packing which probably served as foundation for the brick wall above. On the top is a platform 8 meters wide. Another interesting structure that at Kotlingala that came to light is the presence of a watchtower or bastion in the southeast corner. Built in seven courses, it lies disturbed at few places in between. Below the seventh course lay, the, lay alluvial soil with mud rampart, or mud rampart mixed with lime. Turning towards east, it projects forward for 75 meters, for 75 centimeters. On complete exposure, it measures 11.65 meters long east-west 
and 10.55 meters wide north south. Here I may say that <coughs> the occurrence of bastion comes in the fortifications of <coughs> the Telugu country of Andhra, AP, composite Andhra Pradesh. For the first time, we come across the evidence of a bastion in the forts. <coughs> Overlooking the stream Pedavahu, it commands a panoramic view and is of much strategic importance. Its significance lies in the fact that it provided evidence of a bastion for the first time in the defensive architecture of Telugu land, resembling those in Harappa and Mahindra of Chalkulita culture and Kosambi and Dahichatra of paint and graveyard. To the same period belongs the brick revetment wall built at the foot of the wide rampart in 21 courses rising to a height of 1.20 meters and a width of 1.80 meters below which again lay rubble packing mixed with marum as on the top. The discovery of the site based on the coins of post Maurya and pre satana periods that is 4 3rd century BC and 1st century, first century BC and the early satana coins with legends of 1st century BC characters is found to be of foremost significance as it revolutionized the prevailing theory that the Satavahanas succeeded the Mauryas in the Telugu land directly, immediately after them, and they hence led them back to 3rd century BC, who and say, and, as, and take the Puranic evidence into consideration, which says that they ruled for over 50 years, that is, till 2nd, 3rd century AD, which, however, is not supported by facts. On the other hand, it takes back the antiquity of Telangana to most of the postmodern times in mid Godavari Valley. It also proves that the Satavahanas began their rule in 1st century BC at Kotalingala and thus were the earliest rulers of the states as against the hitherto held belief of Amravati Dharnakota in the lower Krishna Valley, which is said to be the original homeland of Satavahanas. Here I may say, that the early Satvahanas had nothing to do with the lower Krishna Valley, and it's only after uh, or during the time of Gautam Purusatakarmi in first century AD that uh, uh, Satvahanas came to Amaravati. <clears throat> Other important sites, the post Satvahana period, that is, mm, mm, um, 3rd century AD or Nagarjuna Konda, that is Vijayapuri or the Ikshwa course, uh, on the way bank of the river Krishna. By the way, the capital of the Salankainas, capital of Vengi, situated near Eluru in West Godavari district, Andhra Pradesh, and Kesaraputta, situated about 40 kilometers west of Hyderabad, and Pishtapura, modern Pitapuram, near Kakinada in East Godavari district, Andhra Pradesh. An important feature of the habitation sites repeated is that Dulikatta, Satanikota, Pedavanku, Virapuram, and Nagarjunkunda revealed rectangular enclosure walls built of brick and stone, which is an improvement over the preceding period. Excavations in Satani Kota revealed a fortified township in, in SKT-1, which yielded a massive fortification wall and a moat. In SKT-3 and 4 came to light near the southern periphery of the mound, a massive gate complex and ex extension of fortification wall. This is ascribable to the date ranging from the middle of 1st century BC to 3rd century AD. The main fortification wall shows the use of kadapa slabs of irregular dimensions laid in mud mortar with 10 to 13 courses and 3 to 20 meters wide. Last in the order comes Kesaraputta near Hyderabad, uh, Hyderabad uh, which revealed a residential complex built in Trishala Vastu pattern assignable to 4th, 5th century AD. The structures here include a massive wall, large brick structure containing five cells, prefaced by a common veranda with a square portico on the front and the flight of steps. While the above are some of, are some of the Saladur Gauss, that is land forts, of the traditional classification, we also find a Jalurga or island fort by Kolehu in West Godavari district which finds mentioned in the Alhabad Pillar inscription of Samadha uh, as Kunala Lake, then present the early medieval period, 7th to 10th century CD. <clears throat> During this period, Royal Sima and major portion of Telangana were under the authority of non-Telugu dynasties, that is, the Western Chalikyas of Badami, the Eastern Chalikyas of Bengi, and Rashtrakutas of Malkit. 
the Ayurveda inscription of Polukas in the second states that he captured the forts of Krishtapura, modern Tutapuram, and Kunala in Andhra Pradesh. Gutti, situated near Turumara Vishya in Antarpur district, was also under the authority of Polukas II, ruled by his born of Lekaris. Extant remains of this period are almost ex- absent, except for few, at Adanki and Kanduku in Prakasam district, Vemulavada in Karbala district, Kodanpaka in Elgonda district, and Mudugonda in Kamam district, Telangana. Vijayavada and Rajmahindaravaram uh, on the banks of River Krishna and Godavati respectively find mention in the inscriptions of period. The forts in this period are mostly Stalagar gods as prescribed by Kautaja, and there are few Jaladar gods like Kunala, again medieval period. This is during this period we find forts increasing in number spread all over the Telugu country and gaining in importance. Extant remains of forts are large in number, possessing all the adjuncts prescribed by Kautilya and other works on progeny, statecraft, and Vastu texts. This period also saw the appearance of works on quality in Telugu, such as Akalanicha Sammatama of Padana, Malanas Vakmangar Jaritra, Uttara Harivansum of Nachana Soma, Krida Varamam of Vinukunda Vallavaraya, and Amukta Malida Krishna Devaraya, which deal with the subject of forts. This period witnessed the emergence of a large number of hill forts, that is, Guild of Gods, in comparison to the Stala, Jala, and Vana, Vandur Gods. An important feature of the forts in this period is that they possess all the agents required for a fort, that is, moat, rampart, gateways, bastions, parapet wall, pyres with loopholes, matriculations, and barbicans meant to prevent the direct or onward rush of the enemies. In addition, there are also usual granary filled with weapons, food stocks, military equipment, and stables for elephants and lodges, magazines, jail, granary for soldiers, granary, soldiers, and quarters for the civilians, treasury, and finally the citadel or palace complex for the commandment of the commandant of the fort. The main factors that govern the construction of the fort is the selection of site that is of strategic importance, available to building material and water resources in plenty. During this period, fort grew as a political military institution and Telugu works assigned a place of importance to a fort on the basis of its situation. The main shapes prescribed for a fort by Kautilya are circular, square, or rectangular. Stone became the main material of construction as, as against the earlier perishable brick and mud. The technique developed during this period is cyclopean masonry, in which large blocks of stones were piled one above the other and tightly fitted into each without the use of any joining or binding material, that is, tunum or mortar. Yazdani observes medieval folds by the advance of knowledge. Masonry seems to have been introduced in building defense works, first in crude forms, but later quite regular. Although the size of the stones, as in the cyclopean walls, as in the cyclopean, sir? Sir? Yes, please. Huh? Yes. Continue, sir. Please continue. Ah, yes. Cyclopean bonds remained a significant feature of military architecture of Deccan until the advent of the Muslims. Apart from the size of the masonry, the other distinguishing features of Hindu military constructions are irregular form of the stone and the entire absence of the use of cement of any kind. The joints were perfectly chiseled and then were laid one above the other, being kept together only by their enormous weight. After the advent of Muslims, a vigorous style of military or teacher developed with the use of guns. Due to the late medieval period that came Indo-Muslim or Indo-Saracenic or teacher, the fe- chief feature of which is the use of lime and mortar as joining materials besides brick and tiles to serve as decorative or ornamental devices in the superstructures or the gateways and ramparts. Another feature is the use of archivate order that is crescent-shaped or shaped order as it is a tribute that is square and rectangular order are the pillar beam lintel style are the Hindus. The extant remains show 
a blend of both Hindu and Islamic features. A general survey of the forts and fortifications in the two states shows that there are about 160 forts, fortified villages, and towns situated in different uh, in in different places. Among them, hill forts predominate over the other categories. Important forts in this period are Adoni, Gandikota, Golconda, Varangal, Gutti, Chandragiri, Penugonda, Udaigiri, Kondavildu, Kondapalli, Kachukonda, Devarkonda, and Bhonagiri. Unfortunately, I am not able to give illustrations to you because I am not familiar with the technology, latest techniques, and, I am, and being a, 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 a suffering from knee joint pains. And I'm, I'm unable to go outside and get them uh, show. I have photographs in my book, but uh, I don't know if whether I can show them to you all. Hmm. Then, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. After studying the archaeological sites of the early historic period, ranging the date from 3rd century BC to 3rd century AD, we shall now turn our attention to the study of monuments spread over the two states. In this connection, it may be said that the monuments are mostly of religious character. That is Buddhism, Jainism, and Vedic Hindu, Vedic Hindu belonging to different periods. Now to, let us take up Jaina architecture. Coming to Jainism, it should be noted that it is as early as Buddhism in Andhra and both coexisted together. It is equally widespread in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, like Buddhism, since almost 4th century BC and continued for a longer period, that is till 4th century AD, than Buddhism. There are nearly 21 Jaina centers beginning with Adilabad as a state in the north to Chittur in the south and Srikakulam in the east to Antapur district in the west. Like Buddhism, the architectural Jaina monuments also falls into two categories, that is rock cut and structural. To the first category belong natural caves and caverns hewn out of living rock. In the beginning, the Jaina monks preferred rock caverns and caves. These are largely located in the high mountain ranges of the Eastern Ghats, including rock shelters. Since the Jaina aesthetics were wandering in nature, they resorted to rock shelters, which served as temporary refuges. Inside are rock hewn beds to enable them to observe their religious practice, so they you know, for attaining salvation. These caves and caverns are generally devoid of any architectural embellishment or cultural carvings. Few caves of this kind are noticed at Malakonda near Kandukuru in Prakasam district, Chippagiri in Karnaval district, and Ramatirtham in Vijayanagaram district, it's in Andhra Pradesh. To this category belongs a cave called Unalukutta, situated near the village Kapparava Peta in Karbina district, Telangana, where the term Muni denotes monk in Jaina theology. On the flat top of the hill, under a cavern of four rock cut beds, resembling those in the districts of Madurai and Tenavali in Tamil Nadu. In close proximity to these caves are found few surface, found on surface few Satavana coins. The next site that Jesus mentioned is Vardhamanu, probably corruption of Vardhamana, situated in close proximity to Amravati in Kuntu district on the bridge, which in excavations conducted by the Birla Archaeological and Cultural Research Institute Hyderabad under the supervision of late industry, TVG Sastri, yielded remains of a Jaina stupa and a number of label inscriptions mentioning the names of Jaina teachers and lay disciples. The antiquities discovered here range from BC 4 to AD 5. Among the portraits found here are few which bear label inscriptions recording donations to some Ganas. Ganadharas and Sanghas and Viharas. An interesting find is the rim of Rowleted Way, which reads Samprati Vihara, datable to AD 1. The name Samprati is believed to be the grandson of Mori Asoka, a controversy hmm, Asoka, a disciple of Sohastin, well known as Jain Asoka. It's a matter of controversy whether it is Buddhist or a Jaina, <coughs> because the term Vihara does not appear in Jaina architecture or Jaina uh, structures. On that basis, uh, Dr. Ike Sarma, late Dr. Ike Sarma argued that it is a Buddhist site and not a Jaina. <coughs> and a case, uh, it's a matter of control. Uh, 
A cave seen in the Malapurna hill near Kandukuri in Rakat Miss Bravanapresh contains a cluster of caves. One of them beds on the brow of a projecting rock, now called as Paratagoha, an inscription in 3rd century BC characters, it is almost so can, uh, mentioning a gift named by, named, made by a certain Siri Viri Sethi, son of Nanda Sethi of Aruvahulakula. Aruvahula uh, is now, because even now, the Telugu people call the Tamilians as Aravalu or Aruvala. Probably Aruva Arava may have been derived of Aruvahula. <coughs> and then, uh, this is the curtain. Mm. Uh, in the inside the caverns are rock beds meant for monks as Munulagutta. This is because the Jaina monks called the Sravakas and the Lady Navartas and Anuvartas stayed in the caves or cave shelters and did not like to draw the attention of the public. An important place that needs notice is Jelikar Rukodam Nivasudavar district near Kamavarapakota. Here lies a horseshoe shaped ravine in the hill, a circular rocket temple containing a stupa, a vihara, a ruined brick chaitya, and remains in a large pillar, large pillared hall. Originally, it is Buddhist, believed to be a Buddhist settlement. But the discovery of an interesting inscription of a Mahamegavahana, a chief of Sada clan of Kalinga, totally changed the existing belief that this settlement belongs to Jainism. Moreover, the name Mahanaga Parvata ascribed to this hill does not correspond to Pitunda of Talami. At a yet another instance, the hill called Konukondla near Guntakal in Antapur district, uh, Antapur district, Andhra Pradesh, named after sage Kunda Kunda, the earliest exponent who founded the Baratkar Gana and Sanskriti Gacha, fourth descendant of Bhadrabahu, and lived during first century AD. Other sites of similar nature are Pinchakala Pod in Kadapa district on the page, where lies a rock shelter called a Sanyasi Guddu yeah, with an inscription in 7th century AD characters stating that a great teacher named Vrishabha of righteous nature resided here. Mailavaram in Kadapa district near Jamala Madhu, which is situated on the banks of the river Pennar, depicts a Tirdhankara and is a Sasana Devi in standing posture flanked by Chauri Bairers and Lanchana, Sastika and Rai Durgam in Anthapur district, JP, where in the slope of a hill are four caves fitted with small stone doors bearing the carved figures of Siddhas. This place is widely known as a god of Chandrabhuta of Mar Sangha and Chandrendra of Yapaniya Sangha. There is also a Vidyalaya education institution carved with figures of three pupils and a teacher. While the above are in Rilesma region of Andhra Pradesh, there are few Jaina cave sites at Ramatirdham, Kolliwalsa in Ardhan Andhra. Of them, <coughs> near the village Kolliwalsa in Srikakim district is a hill called Sangamaya Konda, a cave shrine inside which is a huge Dirdhankara image carved in black granite stone standing in Kayot Sangha posture. Structural temples. Jaina places of worship are called Basadis. These are widely spread all over the states in the early period, that is, <coughs> period till that 7th century AD. According to tradition, these are generally built along the seaside. Langer's remarks, unlike the Hindus, the Jains almost invariably selected a picturesque, picturesque sky site for their architecture, for their temples, valuing rightly the effect of environment on architecture. Before studying Jaina architecture, it may be borne in mind that there is little difference between Hindu temples and Jaina Basadis, except for the carvings of typical Jaina motifs, seat, that is, seated image of Tirdhankara and the Lalata Bimba, that is the lintel of the Sanctum Sanctorum, the carving of 24 Tirdhankara images with a Chauri bearer, with a Chamuk, <coughs> Chamuk, with respect to Lanchanas and the floral and foliage patterns and Purna Gattas in the foot at the Dwara Zekha, that is door jam. The main architectural feature of a Jain temple is a stepped pyramidal sikara. From this period onwards, Jainism began growing on a large scale and distributed widely. As a result, began an increase in the number of basadis, which are named after monks, generals, kings, queens, and other pious saints and donors mentioned in inscriptions of the East Njali of Vengi, Rashtrakota, West Njali of Kalyana, and finally, 
ವಿಜಯನಗರ ದೌಟ್ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಸೈಟ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಡಿಸರ್ವ್ಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಗೊಲ್ಲತ್ತು ಪುಡಿ ಗೊಲ್ಲತ್ತು ಪುಡಿ ಇನ್ ನಿಯರ್ ಜಚ್ಚರ್ ಲೈ ಮಹೂನ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ತೆಲಂಗಾಣ ವೇರ್ ಲೈ ತ್ರೀ ರೂಯನ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾನ್ ಗುಡ್ ಏಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಸೆಂಚುರಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಬಿಲ್ಟ್ ಅ ಬ್ರಿಕ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ದ ಭಿತ್ತಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಡೌನ್ ವಿತ್ ಪ್ಲಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ನಿಚೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕುಡು ಆರ್ಚಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ರಿಕ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಸ್ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಎ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಮಿಷನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಬ್ರಿಕ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಕವೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಯರ್ ರಿವೀಲ್ಡ್ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲಾನ್ಸ್ ಯುನಿಲೀನಿಯರ್ ಪ್ಯಾಟರ್ನ್ that is beginning from single cell with an entrance and an intermediary forge a gap a gadhadriha a mandapa and a flight of steps another important architectural trait of the jaina temple is the free standing pillars referred to as manastambhas and brahmadeva stambhas which are erected in front of the jain temples among the notable ones are pudur in mahuna district kolnapaka in albonda district nagnur in gadna district and telangana chinatambadam and chippagiri in karnataka district kambadur amaravaram agali ratnagiri and penugonda in antapur district and finally danolapadu in kadapa district final <coughs> probably trikuta shrines also began during this period as noticed at vardhamanapura uh, pragatur in mahavana district and penugonda in antapur district respectively to the same period belongs kollipaka or kolan park or uh, kulpak in nalgonda district telangana another notable site and a place of pilgrimage for the jains even today as its beginnings go back to 9th century ad when according to the akunur inscription a certain sankaraganda was ruling over kulipak rajya during the period of the chalukyas of kalyana were built the temples of parsunatha and ambika sasana devi of nemanatha nemanatha Danawal Pod in Gadapod district on the Pradesh is an early Jaina center where excavations brought to light antiquities associated with Jainism. They are finely carved pedestals, pillars, images of Tirdhankaras and Nishidhi memorials. Here, during the time of Rashtrakot Indra III, his general Sri Vijaya observed Salyakhan Varata. Other finds were Chaumuk, a large-sized image of Parsvanadha, Yakshani and Nishidhi. Also, two bases our rashtrakuta temple of teacher comprising a garbhagriha antaraada and a rectangular mandapa was discovered jainism reached its zenith in telangana during a period between 10th and 12th centuries ad as a large number of jaina monuments are built following the brahmanical architectural features and it may be described as the cradle of jainism the reason for this is that political authority was exercised by the karnataka dynasties that is rashtrakuta 8 to 10th and chalukyas of kalyana 10 to 12th both in his own in his own district telangana also demands notice as it is widely mentioned in inscriptions and literature it is identical, it is identical with potali ancient potali <coughs> capital of asmaka which became podana podana <coughs> and bahudanya and, and capital of bahubali son of the first tirthankara adinatha here bharata ruler of potali or podanapura is said to have carved a colossal image of bahubali measuring about 525 bows high seeing this chamundaraya caused the image of gomateswara at srivanagar gola here also lay a jaina temple called indranarayana which was converted as a mosque by mohammed bin tughlaq in uh, in the early 14th century ad during his invasion and invasion against varangal the main art motifs of jainism in andhra art chaumuk yaksha yakshini pairs and astaparatiharya dharma chakra secretary etc the jaina images are generally shown nude and in two yogic postures padmasana seated cross legged and kayorsarga standing erect thus jainism enjoyed which enjoyed heyday for a longer period than buddhism enjoying royal patronage suffered set back from ad 12th century onwards since the advent of the kakatiyas and the political scene of the telugu country for the favored saivism and tense forward began the decadence of jainism Tel- <coughs> telangana during this period became the land of very saivism and the influence of basava it even faced the severe persecution and ruthless attacks took place against the jaina followers and gradually it went into oblivion during the subsequent periods going to the rise and growth of 
Virasaivism and Vaishnavism. Now we will come to Brahminical Hindu architecture. The antiquity of Brahminical you architecture... Have to, you have to be brief, sir. Yes, yes sir. It is getting yeah, uh, stretched. All that, but kindly, because this is important, most important information I am going yes, to share. Yes, sir. The next I, speaker is in the line, sir. So Please make, uh, make it brief. You, you mentioned I, I, the monument. I, I, mentioned the I, monument. I, I, no, no. I will not I will not go into that, but I'll have to give the beginnings of please, Brahman please. Temple or Nature. Go as early as first in the sure. Sure. Architectural, that I, architectural, uh, architectural yes. descriptions without illustrations may not make any sense to the other onlookers. We archaeologists can understand. Yes. Other other people other than archaeologists yes. have to sense something. About yes. what you say. In the, yeah, so, in the absence of any PPT uh, or anything. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, yes, sir. I, I, I'll try to, I'll try, to, I'll try that way. Yeah. And now, please, sorry for interruption. It was. No, no, it doesn't, no, no, it doesn't matter. River, river okay, going no, to join no, ocean. No, we do not no, want to. No, no. At the antiquity of Brahman cloth, which in the form of temples, that is known as Gudi in Telugu and Devala in Sanskrit, begins since the pre Christian era. It appears in the, in, the, in the object, the object of worship lay in the open sky under a tree and hence called Rakshachachya or Rakshachachya. Like Buddhist and Jaina architecture, this place also has two kinds of temples, right? rock cut and spectral. To the form, into the form of that, it's all known. Hmm. Uh, and the um, architectural features of Anantasayan Gudi at Undavalli bear uh, comprise um, mold, artificial mouldings like Padabandha, Adhisthana, Hibi Kapota, with Hara, Kota, and Panjara series, and a Makaratorna over the plastics. Um, and uh, to the Vishnukun, uh, uh, next, uh, the, let me uh, structural. Mm. Mm. At Nagarjuna Kunda also, we found brick uh, structural temples. As many as 12, probably we are all, you are all aware of that. That is the Pushpabhadra Swami, Sarvadeva, uh, and other things. The main object of worship was Rebel Linga, which lay in center with Varimarga on the sidewall, that is uh, for uh, letting out the Abhishek Jala, hmm, over the hmm, complete stone trough. In 13th century, the floors were raised with adding a mandapa. Hmm. And then, hmm, most of the temples had elevated pins and plain walls. Devoid of any moldings. The next phase is early medieval, which witnessed an, a new epoch in temple building activity. During this period, stone replaced the earlier brick as the main material of construction. This period also witnessed the advent of canonical treatises, namely Agamas, Vastu Shastra, and Silpa texts, which deal with the method of constructing temples, that is, their plan, shape, elevation, and other architectural details that had duty to the temple. During this period, the Telugu country was ruled by so, uh, dynasties like that. Hmm? Uh, Chalikas of Badam, I mean, Chalika, Eastern Chalikas of Vengi, uh, Chayat, uh, and then uh, Kakatiyas and all that. And, uh, just, uh, and now let, let, let me, I am, let me point out, uh, this, this is important. The Chalikas of Badam, hmm? uh, they ruled over the territory called Chalikya Vishaya, Comprising the track between the rivers Krishna and Tungabhadra on either side, lying in Nandikutkur or Nanjala regions, Kadul district, Anupish, and Alampur area, Mavana district, Telangana. In this track were, were temples uh, built at a number of places resembling those at Aihale, Badami, and Patotkal in Karnataka. A noteworthy, the noteworthy temples built are Satana Kota, Kodal Sangamisram, Panyam, Mahanandi, Kadamal Kalva. Such a Olu and other Vidin Rail Samaj in one fresh, whereas in Telangana it is Alampur on the banks of the river Tungabhadra. The temples belong to these are called Navbrahma temples. Yeah, the principal architectural features of these temples is that they belong to the Nagara order, that is square or oblong plan with a square griva and curvilinear sea cross topped by ribbed gobble of Makara. <coughs> Amalaka, Amalaka. Hmm. The door jump is a Panchasaka variety with images of Ganga and Yamuna at the base. The material of construction is smooth red sandstone as against later day granite and basalt. 
Another important feature is the absence of Sukhanasa, is the presence of Sukhanasa in the West Nyalika temples in the Karvali Narsikara. In Kadinga region, that's northern, northern Andhra also, so we see similar type of architecture, that is another order, which resembles, that is Madhukesra temple at Mukalingam, uh, Soveshra temple, and Dibesra temple at Saurapalli, and Shiva temple at Jaiti, which resemble those, uh, the Vitala and Rajarani temple in Bhuvaneshwar. The East Jalika or Renji temple comprise the region, so on, so and that is coastal tract. <clears throat> and that here, uh, 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 here are the Pancharamas, the five Arama Kshetras are built, uh, are, are said to have been built during this period, and uh, uh, the Amrarama at uh, Amravati and uh, Chalukya Bhimavaram uh, near Samarlakota have two linga, have tall lingas, very, very, the lingas are very tall and hence double storied. They have two stories. Okay. It is also believed, it is also said that they were originally Buddhist in character, and that is Ayakastambhas and Ayakastambhas, and which have been uh, uh, worshipped as Sivalingas, converted as into Saiva temples. So, hmm. shall we conclude, sir? Uh, sir, I, I, have, I, have, I have a lot of information. Yeah, sir. you have the entire Andhra Pradesh <laughs> going on. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, we appreciate and we respect no, you. Are, no, 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 no. Just let me let me read the thing is that, Sir, already you are you, no, somebody's just, time. Ten minutes you have taken. Yes. Somebody just, is in waiting. No, no. Just let me read out yeah. the concluding concluding paragraphs. Sir, I, I yeah, will. But after will be published no, no, the proceedings, sir. Only only one paragraph I will read. Only yeah. One, pair, one paragraph. Please, 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 sir. I, I will read. Hmm. Hmm. Kutub Shahi, I'll come to Kutub Shahi. The last phase in the architectural history of the Telugu country is marked by the advent of Islamic architecture, mainly in Telangana. The main feature of this style of architecture is the introduction of arch shape, as against the pillar beam lintel style of the Hindus. This is mostly adopted for building mosques, characters that profuse stucco decoration in balconies. Further, the Kutub Shahi built Langar Khanas, Ashur Khanas, Madarsas, tanks, aqueducts, and canals. Hmm. They also introduced a new drainage system by way of conduit pipes and clay for enabling free flow of water. And then it goes, uh, 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 I don't read about, a study of the above, reveal, uh, above details reveals not only the rich cultural heritage of the Telugu country, but also speaks for the need to protect and preserve the heritage for the posterity. At present, the involvement, the, the invaluable monuments are in a neglected state. Although declared as protected monuments by the Archaeological Site and Remains Act of the Archaeological Site of India and Archaeological Site and Remains Act of 19, 1960 by the former state of the Pradesh, it's a matter of lament that though they are declared as protected monuments, sufficient follow up action has not been taken by the departments concerned. Hence, there is dire need to take stringent action against violators of the pollution of the acts but also appoint sufficient staff to take care of them day in and day out and conserve and preserve so that their antiquity and valuable features are not lost. I thank you very much for kindly uh, giving me the opportunity. Excellent uh, rendering, uh, Ramakrishna uh, Murthy Garo. Uh, at, at the age of 80, uh, you sir. have summed up the rich cultural heritage of Andhra Pradesh with such enthusiasm of a small child having found the top of it. No, no, no. no he, and, has, uh, he has put up is, his entire findings research within this one hour. Within entire one service hour. research within it one is, this hour. It is amazing. Was, However, I, I, with uh, I, I, Bob Jiro being very much familiar with you and your research... Uh, I, I'm sorry, Dr. Kesho, huh? I, I did yes, not sir. have the opportunity to see you, although I, I worked in the department, I retired in 2001. I didn't yeah. know that you were here. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Kannababu, Kan Kannababu, yeah. I know him, and um, Dr. Kannababu, I know. Kannababu was my junior colleague. And, and, and Jitendra Das, yeah. all these people who I was. Uh, it's okay. okay. Jitendra Das, Jitendra Das, Jitendra Das, Jitendra Das, you have done at Kanaganali, a Buddhist site. Go and yes. look at yes, the sites yes. of Andhra Pradesh. Yes. 
ప్రొఫెసర్ మిశ్రా ఐ ఎమ్ ఇండీడ్ వెరీ మచ్ థ్యాంక్ఫుల్ టు యూ ఫర్ గివింగ్ మీ దిస్ ఆపర్చునిటీ అండ్ ఇన్ ఫ్యాక్ట్ ఐ నో వెరీ మచ్ దట్ ఐ పర్టర్బ్ యూ కాన్స్టెంట్లీ పర్టర్బ్ యూ అండ్ yesterday and suddenly my 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 phone, my phone got stuck up my phone got stuck up and I, I, any number of times i have troubled you can you excuse me for all the trouble given to you i don't know i don't know, I don't know. how best can i express my thanks i have no words to you but you have been conducting a very precious and with senior scholars are present here it's a matter of pride to be before ah. you and uh, uh, speak these few words and uh, uh, once again i thank you very much mr mishra and all the other uh, fellow scholars kindly um, and kind of forgive me if i am uh, well it is very nice to have heard you in greater de- in great detail about uh, the rich cultural heritage of andhra pradesh and, and we go de- to you for your ex- ex- exemplary knowledge which you have shared with different. us different at the same time in, in the light of new discovery of karnataka of the british stupa uh, yeah, the history of the shatavahana political history of the shatavahana may have to be rewritten in the light of the shatavahana karnataka as we find sundara who is a character in the puranic list of the shatavahana find that is depicted in the form of a sculpture at yes. the karnataka mahachaitya so uh. the early pre early shatavahana uh, list which you gave at bhatti prolog uh, but uh, uh, yes uh, so yes all but those, all those rulers are found sri satkarni king yes. shatavahana all are found at karnataka also in the sculpture but form but in the uh, it uh, is let me let me tell sir in the light of all these discoveries you may have to reframe your part of the pre early history of andhra pradesh right. in the light Because of the new discovery in the light of new scholars here who participated they wanted a, to have a paper copy of the paper of yours certainly provided to sharma ji who can share with the needy and I, 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 i will let me complete let me request Shri Babji Rao to say a few words and I am immensely thankful from the side of organizers and from my side my Dheerga Dhanda Sastanga Pranamans to you may Lord C. Venkateshwara see you reach the century mark may Venkateshwara Mala Ji be with you sir yes let me tell you Mr. Keshwara Mr. Keshwara a single word a one word Yes, see, we have a Buddhist site in the Royal Zimbabwe region also, a lone yeah. Buddhist site in the Royal Zimbabwe region, Kadapati Spain, Mabira where I have excavated. Yeah. Where I have excavated, yeah. under the Buddhist site. Yeah. It is a lone Buddhist site in the Royal Zimbabwe region. Mm-hmm. And also the Prisatwana coins at Kotlingala really uh, revise our existing theories about the yeah, land of... Uh, uh, Bob, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank Sir, you. It's, been a, you. It's, a, it's been a wonderful talk. Uh, devoid of any presentation, but uh, you made all your s- sincere efforts to read out the entire your experience of more than three decades. What we do now? Thank you very much. And uh, we are already we are uh, in uh, Dr. P. Singh's time. Uh, already by t- one o'clock, he should start his talk. Uh, sorry for the this thing, but uh, sir, uh, with all our respects, uh, we thank you. Very, we thank we thank the organizers for the opportunity. and uh, if possible you can you send your all the paper uh, just so that it has any proceed it will be published and be reached with the because Certainly. you have de- you have delivered immense knowledge it's, it's not available I, in the presentation i i'll, I'll send my copy 
I will send a hard copy to okay. Professor Mishra. Yeah, that's good. Mishra. Hmm? Thank you very much. Thank you, Monitor. Thank you. Yes, sir. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Let me assist you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor Anas Ramchandra. Yes. And also wish a warm, wish a happy Sankranti. Happy Sankranti. And Doctor, uh, and Sir Babi Rao Sahab for co-chair the session. Uh, my nice talk of uh, uh, Dr. N. S. Ramchandra Murthy. His speech uh, also I have received and uh, published uh, uh, pub in a uh, uh, book. Uh, thank you. Now, That's next person, uh, Chairperson Dr. A. P. Singh, Principal Chief of Forest, Government of Gujarat. Which person, Dr. Satyendra Kumar, Head Department of Geology. SNS College, Bajipur, Bihar, and eminent speaker, Prince Shikha, I of the Center of Forest, Institute of Forest Productivity, Rajput, Bharatand, Regional Center, Sukhna, Barzili. So, uh, welcome all of you, sir. And uh, now I am requesting to uh, Dr. A.P. Sikhi, and uh, introducing our uh, eminent speaker, Sri P. P. Lakara. You see, sir. Hello. Ah. You see, Lakara, sir. Welcome, yes, sir. Ah. Ah. Sir, A.P. Sikhar, please continue. Welcome, sir. Sir. Dr. A.P. Singh, sir. Uh, please unmute you. एपी सिंह साहब आवाज नहीं आ रही आपकी आ नहीं आ रही हाँ सर मैं हाय डॉक्टर सरन कुमार फ्रॉम हाजीपुर हाँ यार वेलकम सर वेलकम समझ गया रहा है जी सर जी सर हाँ खुल गया है और वो मंगा पा रहा है सर एपी सर मिश्रा जी मिश्रा जी एपी सिंह साहब आपसे जुड़ने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं आई थिंक ही वाज ट्राइंग टू कॉल यू अच्छा अनम्यूट अनम्यूट नहीं किया है क्या यार अंधा साहब यस सर आप अपना प्रेजेंटेशन से कब तक मैं नहीं करूंगा यस सर सर ये अनम्यूट जी है अनम्यूट नहीं हुआ ये प्लीज प्लीज अनम्यूट योर हाँ प्लीज इंट्रोड्यूस इमिनेंट स्पीकर सर डॉक्टर सत्येंद्र कुमार को चेयर सर ओके सर ओके सर थैंक यू सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर आई डॉक्टर सत्येंद्र कुमार from hajipur welcome to the fourth series of national webinar organized by the government ms golkarkar college riva today we will hear about kanchonga a land of unique diversity unesco mixed heritage our mr p saka and mr chal they have worked on conservation of mr heritage of diversity something very in the interest of society we in the audience are mainly such scientists curious to know about the heritage site sir now i will about mr lakra dr pramod chandra ka is city conservation of forest institute of forest productivity ranchi in particular it is from dun babo school to mega and bc agriculture vidhan chandra kishi vishwavidyalay mo md for agriculture from tnau wadu gnf a diploma for it 
His post graduate diploma in GIS application in rural development, NIRD and P. His experience as an ex banker with international bank, a center of the responsibility of people, a quote, of forest, a quote, a quote, a quote, a quote, a quote, that may be government to rural development to vegetarian GIS. His topic is wild like conservation and management in Kantan Jonga Biosphere. I request Mr. Thilakra, you start your presentation. Sir. Uh, am I audible to everyone? Am I yes, audible? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, then let me my presentation with the permission of the chair and the co-chair. So uh, today I'm going to present a unique uh, World Heritage Site, one of its kind in India. That's the Kanchanjunga National Park, uh, also, uh, including the Kanchanjunga Biosphere Reserve. So I talk for two sessions land of unique diversity, UNESCO, UNESCO, so uh, located in Sikkim, a very small state in the northern uh, part of India, uh, bordering West Bengal, Nepal, Bhutan, China. So this is the different wildlife protected areas in Sikkim, the Kanchan National Park, the yellow area which you are seeing is the Kanchan National Park. Then this that is buffer region one, buffer region two. These are it's not changing. Lakasa, your slide is not changing. Uh, it taking time. It will be. Uh, it takes time. It's not changing. Uh, at my end, it is the same, sir. It's your slide. I'm not sure I'm about that. Slide. I am on the third slide. Yes, sir. It's come now. It's and come now. It's come. A slow, I, I have to move a little slow. Time like there, I think. Uh, talking. Oh, thank you, sir. So, um, I just wanted to show through this picture the different uh, wildlife protected areas in Sikkim. The is the you can see how large it is occupying about 25% of the area. Then this is the buffer region. Uh, then this is also some of the different wild eastern part of the. <laughs> Pangoleka Wildlife Sanctuary. Uh, here, the tiger, uh, tiger has been uh, camera trapped recently in one year, uh, one or two years back. So, they wanted to show the different uh, sanctuaries here in uh, Sikkim. Next, coming to the uh, of uh, forestry in uh, Sikkim, if, if we see that by 1950, the local cars, they are the governors were for the management of the state. There was the forest department who was responsible for the management of this forest. Then, there are the lamas. Lamas has a music uh, value uh, system because it was ruled. Uh, by the kings and the lamas were mainly the advisors to this government or the, to the kings. So they have a powerful uh, say in matter of the government before it had been a part, before it became a part of India. So they also had this Kumpa forest. But Kumpa basically means the monster forest. It was controlled by the lamas. Then there was the private estate and managed by private forest or the the Chogias of the kings. Uh, so basically they had. The management system did not have to uh, cut the trees or fell the trees. Uh, they had to take a portion of the for uh, cutting, uh, for felling of the trees. They will never give parties or uh, the chalans for uh, grain, all those people living nearby. So, coming to the Kanchan National Park, uh, Kanchanjunga National Park, it was in 1902 declared as a reserve forest. Uh, 1905, uh, Sir, up slide change, kar dijiye, ka, please. Please come slide number four. Sir, kar diye, sir. There is a time lag. There is a time lag, I think. Is coming, sir? No, sir. What? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. He's coming. Okay, so it's lagging behind, I think, because of the network. Uh, so, in 1902, it was a uh, reserve forest. In 1905, it's a Kasmal government uh, revenue control forest. Then they have extended government forests for uh, basically means area given for grazing. In 1977, it was declared as the national park with an area of 874 uh, square kilometer. In 2016, uh, it was declared as a UNESCO World Heritage Site of Mi both in natural and a cultural domain. Uh, so the next slide is on. 
Yes, yes. Uh, this is the, yes, this is the Kanchanjanga Vice Fair Reserve. Join the Kanchanjanga Vice Fair Reserve. Then they, are the, uh, they have divided this area into three, three parts. Basically, they are the core area, core area, the buffer zone, and the transition zone. The yellow zone, uh, we, uh, as far as um, it has a uh, some centrum where uh, and local people are not allowed uh, the first of the management with special permission the sister they can go and this others have which uh, allow this zone the buffer zone uh, so the core area then this is the time uh, the area in blue color where most of the villages are located in Zanjana national park so the total area of this uh, national park is 2000 uh, biosphere reserve is 2900 of 1700 is the only and the transition zone is 300 square kilometers and the buffer zone 835 square kilometers and it occupies 20% of the whole state of Sikkim and uh, as you see how important is this area in, uh, in a state where percent of the area is occupied by a national uh, uh, biosphere reserve including the national park. Next time, uh, as we uh, had listened to the uh, answer uh, day before yesterday about the different outstanding uh, universal value uh, of which particular site has to be proposed. Uh, one way uh, we have uh, seen a presentation and he had talked about the criteria, uh, time was showing uh, under which uh, category it has been proposed. So, this uh, Kanchananga uh, Biosphere Reserve has been proposed as a mixed cultural and natural heritage site defined in the paragraph 26 of the operational guidance uh, given by the World Heritage Convention. And it's also a state landscape and corresponding to the of associated cultures. Uh, that says because it has a popular religion and Arctic association of the national element. So uh, it has been considered under the mixed category. So the nomination has been sent for the international Jaga with the criteria 3, 7, and 10. So uh, the nomination has been under the criteria 3, 7, and 10. So uh, coming to the international Jaga National Park, as we know, uh, it contains very several sacred peaks, caves, rocks, and lakes associated, which are worshipped by the Indian community, the Lepjas. Buddhas and songs. The letters of the indigenous people. There is a history that they were. These were the people made of the, made from the so, snows. And the Buddhas are the people who have arrived, uh, in Sikkim area from Tibetan in the 13th century. And beside this, there are the songs uh, who are uh, in the Bepfar area. Now the settlements of people from Darjeeling, Nepal, of local region, settling and around this area. And Kanchanjanga is uh, revered through the rituals and festival dedicated to it. Uh, but the ascent of the peak is forbidden as the abort of Sikkim Gorjan died. It was a scale in uh, the year 54. Joe Brown and George Bent. But they did not climb till the summit because they uh, prohibited and restricted by uh, the, the king, which had asked them not to touch, which is the sac sacred uh, abode of the god. So it was not touched with Buddhism being introduced in the 17th century. The dong, who, uh, who is deity, resides in this Kanchanjanga uh, was further confirmed the title of the chief defender of the dam and its precious hidden treasures. So uh, it's both sexual and cultural importance. Again, uh, coming to the Janga National Park, it had the highest peak, the third highest peak in the planet, which in 1852. It was considered to be one of the highest peaks in the world. But later on, the Great Reunion of India in 1856 declared that it is the third highest most peak in the world. And besides that, there are numerous Peaks measuring over 6,000 meters located within the park. These peaks have attracted mountains and photographs alike. That's why 952, starting from them, the people have been trying to uh, sell this. There are three different areas, uh, uh, four different locations from Kanchanjanga. Uh, three are from Nepal side and one is from Indian side. But from inside, is out because they have prohib prohibited it. We come to later through declaration. So, uh, what we have from, uh, so that are tiling, uh, it's a view from Serb to say, Tiger Hills, so we can the tallest peak, the and the peaks there, the different peaks here, and we can have a beautiful view, beautiful view of this uh, peak. So, the criteria seven, uh, besides this highest peak being there, there are the glacier, one of the largest layer in Asia, and besides that, there are different glacial peaks in Kanchanjanga National Park. So, there are uh, other 76 glacier peaks besides that, 18 crystalline plastic hives. Uh, then, coming to the criteria 10. KNP is a protected area with world widest at altitudinal range. It has a vertical sweep. It's 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 a vertical sweep. Uh, it enables one to extraordinary range of eastern Himalaya landscape and from 
Alpine, Trans Himalayan, mosaic of the uh, ecosystem is found within such a small area. Further uh, other area, then this, uh, then there is the Inuvarma uh, hotspot. This is considered as the 34 global biodiversity hotspot, global 200 ecosystem uh, considered world wildlife fund and one endemic bird area according to bird, uh, bird international and its animal uh, efforts to endangered species. Then uh, coming to the state of integrity, the criterion with the statement of integrity submitted by a state to be declared site as a world heritage site. So uh, that representation is proper. And uh, this, the whole 80 square kilometer of the KNP declared in 1970 the mountains glaciers further with the declaration in 1997 it was increased 17,844 square kilometer. So all the mountain system, the glacial rivers, uh, was included in this uh, this. Uh, St uh, statement so that we can have further uh, strength uh, in uh, for declaration uh, with the statement of we also state that uh, the party said that the area of Mount Kanchanjunga and physical uh, and geological in this part of the are sacred protect and this is a major peak which are venerated by the songs so it, it, it is very unique and it is protected under uh, the Indian Wildlife Protection. And as I uh, already discussed, that uh, it is a uh, banned scale secret uh, piece because, uh, and also the refinement of secret lake springs and caves are uh, prohibited. So we can have some glimpse of different uh, mountain peaks, glaciers. So this is the mountain peaks, the Mount Kanchanjanga, which is 8,586 meter in height. Uh, that is the peak, the second picture. And uh, people flock to different areas like the, in Darjeeling, uh, they go to to have a beautiful view of the Sanjanga, they go to Pailing and Fredericks to have a And mostly all the tourism uh, are based on uh, this uh, Like if you go for uh, two or three areas, uh, then you would like to have uh, beach facing. Uh, so in if you people would like to have a Kanchanjanga facing rooms, which would be much costlier. So major chunk of the tourism is based on this view of Mount Kanchanjanga. So, then this other other mountains, the Sinal Chunkhang, Jopunu, Mount Nursing. Then coming, it is a major source of uh, river, the Tista and uh, Rangit. And the place is called Trivini. And then these are the rivers Chopu, Kanachula, and basically the water for Suri and in the part of Bangladesh. We receive uh, sprinkled water for rivers, and there are different hydro projects based on this uh, Tista uh, Bangit river. So we are getting our city made out chunk from this river, which has origin in Kachajanga. There are the sites of beautiful river location in Kachajanga National Park. There are beautiful uh, waterfalls are more perennial. Then I, I talk about the Jimu Glacier. There are the other glaciers, the glacier, and glacier, and different uh, glaciers available in Kachajanga National Park. When talking about the lakes, we have the different uh, glacial lakes there. Uh, from famous among them, the Gorongarjo, which is uh, most visited by the uh, people are visiting this and considering very uh, sacred this, uh, this lake. Then coming to the uh, statement of integrity, there are significant mostly by Buddhism and Mount and festival sacred to Mount Kanchanjanga, and there is no uh, significant adverse to the outstanding universe value of Kanchanjanga National Park and the beauty of the Mount Glacier and other wild uh, scape camp is virtually intact, is totally protected as a national park because of the wildlife action. Uh, so these are, uh, this is one of the monasteries which uh, we can uh, see uh, is stayed in Kanchanjanga National Park. Uh, so there are different monuments, secrets. Uh, according to uh, Bru Padmasambha, the second uh, guru or second Buddha, they call it. Uh, uh, this land is called the, uh, the hidden land, hidden desert land. So coming to the uh, again to the element of authenticity, uh, they talk about Nepal is a religious people. It had been written by Gondu uh, in 18th century, and it was uh, discovered by Tetan Sangya in Pei in 14th century. So Nayaswal is a very important document. Uh, we talks about the Buell, the hidden land, or the uh, indigenous people called it Mayal Lang. So the talk is very important. And it also describes the sacred landscape and location, the sacred site. And every year, they, in the, from the 17th or 18th century, uh, they separate or with this Mount uh, Kanchanda. And Ang Lapsol is one of the. Ang Lapsol is a potential land. And the people are here to be honest. Then the different uh, sacred sites we can have, we can see when if you traverse through Kanchanjanga National Park.
far here is a secret this monuments small monuments of stones by piling up the stones uh, while they are making it to the different sites and they are this mountain is very sacred if if any uh, if whatever is this year whatever so it is very sacred and the people of sikkim are very religious and about this national park this is a national event every festival sikkim daily is part of sikkim state since time immemorial and continue to be part of its sacred area and special purpose i think it is the happy purpose of this national park and as per the old the speed function and tradition of kmp building maintained and as you know the geography and they maintain the same place as it was previously so next i would like to show the picture of uh, the nine old text which uh, hello Honestly, like basically, we can uh, if we uh, see just below this river, run in the middle, in the center, you can see that you saw uh, this foundation stone of the Namgye Namgye King. So the Bama uh, to the Konya, so so the important place is created this Kajanjanga National Park, where the foundation of the English take place. So this uh, again coming to the statement of authenticity, the government have protected such to different protective measures such as acts and notification. Uh, again, uh, uh, this is the defining of secret card allowed in this. Area. So the forest will have for environment wildlife management department is there in the government of Sikkim, and it mentions that under national parks managed properly, and we have this conservation uh, management plan 2018, which mostly I had referred to uh, for this presentation. Uh, so they have to control the system and attribute of the national park that uh, due to biological diversity, it's a duty recreational opportunity, cultural and educational value, and one has to scientific note, and at the same, ensuring sustainable flow of resources for traditional livelihood, along with the development of the. First department is uh, mainly managing this conservation and national park, and they have this management plan to look. Uh, Into the management of this area, they are into all the protection activities. Uh, the reason is appropriate. Sustain our sustainable diversity. We have to have other outstanding diversity values such as national parks. The reason is appropriate. Sustain. So the, the different factors that are affecting the values of KP, uh, which I will talk in detail uh, later on, are mainly astronomy, tourism, hunting, disease, wild animal, dogs, and fire. And for this, the uh, tourism is the part that sets the zone. So there are different factors coming over the buffer zone, the condition zone. Then there is uh, limitation on control of grazing, improvement of habitats, and of tourism, conservation of biodiversity. Section of human-animal conflicts. So, uh, uh, first I am more into the IUCN technical because it's a because it looks like uh, natural uh, biodiversity part goes to the IUC and the other one goes to IUCN uh, International uh, Commission uh, Monuments Sites. So they uh, evaluate the cultural site and the IUCN evaluates the part. Uh, the natural biodiversity so generally what they do is they compare with the other different sites. So here it talks that. Uh, In, in the eastern Himalayas, it will be compared with uh, Nanda Devi or uh, Valley of uh, Nanda Devi, also called the Valley of Flowers, Great Himalayan Park, Jharmata, which is the Mount Everest uh, National Park, uh, where Mount Everest is, and the National Park is there. We have played with it, and it's fine that it is uh, unique in its own. Uh, besides talking about which I talked earlier, that within 40 uh, square kilometers, it has a vertical gravity meters, but uh, it compares and says that even so, an actual altitude difference, where Nepal has uh, 8,19 meter. Original gradient in a small one lakh fifty thousand hectares is about fifteen square kilometers. Nevertheless, the technical bulletin says that there are not many places in the world where such a gradient is possible at all, and NP is without a rare and a rare example of its uniqueness. In, uh, so uh, this may I want to say of the Kanchan Nagar National Park, Kerala, Bihar, and Nepal border, we see Kanchan Nagar we have already listed as a uh, world heritage site, right? So then there's the Sagar Matha where the Mount Everest is located. Makalo Barun is there where the, they talked about the gradient increase is there. So the uh, conserve uh, though KCA and KNKD that is the Kanchenjunga National Park and Kanchenjunga Conservation Area are uh, one extent but they are not concerned. What is this? This effort made by the uh, state party for getting uh, the commission under World Heritage Site. So, uh, Ayushin technical evolution also. Uh, this national park has Indo-Malayan tepid broadleaf and mixed forest biome, which is tested on any other sites on the list. And besides, it belongs to Himalayan terrestrial biodiversity and terrestrial park priority region of which Eastern Himalayan alpine meadows is represented in the list of the site. So, it is also home to some 22 endemic plant species, uh, home to snow leopard, uh, Himalayan carnivore. Threatened species such as alpine musk, musk deer, uh, musk deer, prairie leopard, red wild Pacific black deer, and KNP is part of the Eastern Himalaya uh, endemic bird area. So, uh, as, as part of endemic bird area, this host to at least 127 bird species under its concern, and it is an international bird area. At least four biomes. 
so this had uh, come to the different floras and faunas we can visit move to the, to the side so we can have view of the beautiful uh, himalayan rubar and the different cordyceps Sinensis, which is very uh, the particular uh, species, which um, and I can particularly value in market for this medical purpose. So this is the uh, flowers. Plus, the beautiful rhododendrons are there available. Of by nature, the again the rhododendrons. There is other panda, snow leopard, clouded leopard. The tin, which is just. Uh, the national animal of Bhutan, which is uh, found in Sikkim also. Then we have the blue sheep, Veral. Then there are the musk deer, which is a known uh, and we are getting scent from the musk deer. Then this other deer, this is the black -like deer, the Himalayan hawk, the mainland sero, it comes from, uh, then the Himalayan coral. So there we have a different fauna which are rare to this place only the great tibetan seed wild animal fox tibetan gazelle black is there uh, himalayan marmot is found in this kanchenjunga national park besides that uh, it is an endemic bird area so we have small pigeon tragopan pigeon snow pigeon uh, the other hawks and sail ducks are also found in this particular area so uh, Besides, if we are not any, uh, we have the, the site as recognized as World Heritage Place, but we did not it this very So, it would be under which condition this deletion occur, where the property has deteriorated, that it has those characteristics which are used in the world list. The intensive qualities of World Heritage property has already threatened at the time of its nomination by human action, and where the necessary corrective measures by the at the time have not been taken within the time process. So next, uh, the next, so that when property is inscribed on the world, like it has seriously deteriorated and no time, uh, means there has no uh, proper correction in the purpose to maintain uh, the area. And proper, uh, when the case is information from a source and the concern, it will verify the source and the information. The state party concern is uh, the government shall not decide to delete any party unless the state party has been concerned. So, on this condition, the revision is over. So, the uh, first department, uh, which, uh, Dealing with the issue of maintaining this area site, uh, how well, is this a big area? So they are trying there to maintain it. Some of the implements which uh, are able to um, put forward this uh, platform is that uh, there are different stakeholders as we talked about the Lepsas, Bhutia, Songs, and the Nepalis. Uh, there are not much population there, so 8,353 people uh, people are only there, and they are mostly based on sustenance level farming. Uh, but coming to the the regional structure of management of administration of this area. You see, there is a field director uh, who, who is a dependent of uh, like me. There are two ACFs, there are the range officers, RO are the range officers, and there are the officers, there are the first guards. So, there are 40, 40 45 people meaning this particular area. So, the big challenge for them, but the whole factor is that the sacred site, uh, people don't uh, disturb it, uh, and it's mostly inaccessible. And if you uh, want to go there, from the road is about one to maximum to reach the boundary of the current national park. So it's a difficult site to uh, manage or to maintain and for also the people for to be accessible, but there are some issues which are managed. So uh, there are three different uh, ranges. The purple one is the challenge, uh, the yellow one, the orange one is the Jongu range, and the blue one is the Yuxan range. So the three uh, ranges are there. They are having three to four guards and one bit of the interval to look after the management practice of the particular area and the issues related to wildlife and forestry. So uh, some impediments, then there's the biodiversity theft. One group was caught in 2001. But there are very rare occasions which they have highlighted in the management plan, but there are chances that they may increase if they are not willing. Really the check people, citizens, and people, is the, he was also. So he had a little election over time, and they had mobs and like from the single Ila range. Uh, area of the Dazzling as well as the Sikkim, and he was finally caught. So there are some issues with that. Then there is a putting of the must there once or twice. Uh, Raging within the national park, people from the bird area goes for in this uh, national park. So they uh, create a duck ship. So it is an issue out there. So then there is the habit, habit, habitat drain and light erosions. Uh, then there are the management infrastructures uh, because people clothing, veils. Uh, 
equipments are required so impediments are there so things will be made available to them so that they can increase their sense and protection management of the areas because they have to look into the management issues also the villagers administrative the, because the the last step in this villages are the forest department so uh, the people issues has to be tackled by these people only so they so if they don't have proper infrastructure then uh, there is a problem again there is um, maintenance uh, infrastructure which has already been there uh, like a water tower log just be parts uh, this more road to make it to which need to change the maybe broken up uh, due to landslides so they need to make basic then uh,
Uh, I think yes. it's very good presentation. Thank you, Dr. Lagra, and wish you all the best for a better future. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I am available. So, I think uh, over the organizer's side. No, now you are audible, sir. They conclude. No, I, think, uh, I am audible, is fine, but uh, chairperson, sir, co chairperson, are not. Okay. So, I think over to our next side. Uh, uh, Lunch break me I I think I made made the presentation short. That's why he left. I think. <laughs> it's a very informative talk. Hello, thank very you very much. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. All the talk about Kajiranga would oh. have made his. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you, Dr. Sir. Sir, 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 uh, I am also uh, thankful to Mr. Uh, Dr. A.P. Uh, Dr. C. Uh, Dr. Chief Conservator of Forest Gujarat for the session and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Patil Kumarji from Haji Parvuchi uh, session and uh, 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 thanks to uh, other participants, uh, Dr. Anisha Ahmed sir, Dr. Uh, Vidyana Jha sir and uh, 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 um, who participate in the uh, webinar uh, session. So, thank you, sir. Thank you, all of you, sir. Okay. Now, uh, next session. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Session, Sri C.H. Babji Rao, Deputy Superintendent, Archaeologist, Hyderabad. <laughs> Our eminent speaker, Mr. Siu Sankar Babu, managing partner, techno banker, ECM, Tamil Welcome, sir. Babu, sir. And uh, Babji, sir. Uh, Babji, uh, sir. Uh, in... yeah. Oh, please share the session. Uh, uh, Sir uh, Babji Rao, sir, please share yes, and do our event, sir, Mr. Susan Babu. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's been a pleasure of taking part in this series of a plethora of lectures covering both natural and cultural heritage of India. Great thanks to our uh, professor, Skant Kumar Mishaji. Uh, no, uh, I know Mr. Shivshankar Babu, uh, he's a very energetic, very good in heritage of his friend. That's a beautiful thing. We are in the same moment, uh, the parent gives me the opportunity. And uh, he being uh, by profession, Shankar Babu was a back of a four years of experience. By virtue of the and interesting spin of a great rich cultural heritage of India, especially the southern part of India, the Tamchi Sapuri, which is wrong saying, the capital, temple capital of India. It is spread full of temples, Tamil Nadu is full of temples. And then, Kanu is the uh, center, of, royal center of great Cholas. And then, yes, was uh, seen flourishing of so many, so many greatest temples of a puzzle's nature. So, uh, uh, by saying these things, I, has, I happen to see uh, Shiva Kumar Babu's one of the lectures, one of the lectures in the CCVA. And that is very in, in, interesting. It will be very interesting. I'm sure the audience who are there here will be better by visual and, 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 and a full of nature. Uh, how many of the things will uh, this particular presentation very fruitful? Uh, now I just go a small brief about uh, Babu because whatever he shared here, and he was not only that, uh, um, he was also taking a very active, proactive part in the IIT Chennai for the recruitment parts and the recruitment of people and others. He has done a lot of things, and uh, he has obtained by virtue of his sincerity and inclination, thorough dedication towards research. He obtained some of the diplomas, uh, some of the diplomas in. Uh, 